Have you ever wanted to build a 308, a bolt action rifle that didn't break the bank, offered you a ton of versatility, really awesome accuracy? And I know what you're thinking, and no, it is not a Savage or a Remington 700. Let's get into this video. First questions that I wanted to answer that I've gotten a lot is why did you go with the American Predator there's other options there's other brands everyone thinks of the Remington 700 or the Savage model 10 the tactical because ultimately what I wanted was a 308 that was fairly light had really good mannerisms good ergonomics I could take it hunting with me or I could shoot long distance if I decide so essentially I wanted to do it all 308 and I ended up on the American. Now, the other option that I was looking at was the Mossberg MVP. Mossberg has an MVP, which is awesome. And in my opinion, had some traits that I wish that this Ruger American came with from factory. And one of those traits is the fact that they can use the SR25 magazine. This is the standard magazine that my SIG 716 Patrol uses. It's a 308 magazine. I use Magpul's version of the, and they hold 25 rounds of 308, which is awesome that you can get them in 10 round magazines, five round, 20, 25, very versatile. And it's a double stack magazine instead of the AI style mags, which are single stack. And I wish that the Ruger American had this as an option. Now that wasn't a deal breaker for me. There's things about the MVP that I didn't like. For one, it felt clunkier. It felt fatter and less I should say less ergonomic and that's just to me so that's my opinion take that for what it's worth the other thing is the MVP when I was pricing it out was around $200 I believe more than the American Predator and as I'm about to get into with the Magpul stock by paying $200 less for the Ruger American I had almost enough money to go out and buy the Magpul American Hunter stock, which had just been released just a little bit before I actually bought the American Predator. So just recapping that, one of the main driving points behind me going with the American Predator over the MVP price and the fact that I could run the Magpul American Hunter stock. And as of the time of making this video, I know of no Magpul stock that you can run on the MVP. Plus, when you hold the two rifles side by side, to me personally, it felt like the Ruger had a little bit more sturdy of a design. It just felt better in my hand. With the factory stock, I did not like how the rifle felt overall. It just feels weak, it feels cheap. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because let's be real, this rifle was designed for the budget hunter in mind. It's not supposed to be the $1,000 really heavy barrel 308. Now it does have a medium barrel, one in 10 twist. It is threaded 5 8 by 24, so most of your 308 accessories are going to work just like they would on an AR-10 or any other platform like that. And it is a very versatile platform, even though it is more budget friendly. So don't roll it out just simply because of price. There are definitely reasons to consider going with the Remington 700. There's also reasons to go with the Savage. I'm not going to go over all of that here in this video because this is just a recap or an overview of why I went with the American Hunter. Now I briefly talked about the Magpul Hunter stock, the American Hunter stock. I really love this stock. One of the first things you're going to notice is the cheek riser and this is adjustable. You can buy different cheek risers for these, but it puts your eye at the correct height 
for a scope. Whereas the stock that comes with this rifle, the little polymer plastic stock that's really weird and light and kind of cheap feeling, your eye is actually too low on the scope. So you end up having to stretch your neck up and pull it off the cheek. Whereas with this, I'm right there, right away, every time. It doesn't matter where I point it or where I start from. If my cheek is on this riser, I am perfectly in line with my scope. That is huge for me. As soon as I bought this rifle, I actually bought it first and then I had it shipped to my house and I played with it with the stock that comes with it, I hated it. I absolutely did not like the stock. Now the reason I didn't like it is obviously because the applications I was trying to achieve. And if I was just going for budget for a 308 that's gonna be accurate, be able to shoot deer and other animals, it's fine in its factory configuration. I don't wanna sound like I'm beating it up because it fills a void in the market very well in the budget 308 department. It just leaves something to be desired with the stock configuration. One of my favorite attributes about this stock is the M-Lock sections on the front. As you can see on this side, I actually have a little Picatinny section. I put my Predator light on that. It works out really well. And then I also have the bipod attached to an M-Lock section on the bottom. And this is just a cheap Blackhawk bipod. It's kind of like a Harris knockoff in a way. A nine to 13 inch bipod. It works really well if you're prone or you're sitting low or you have some cover to work off of. The other thing you're going to notice with this stock right away is the fact that it does have a removable magazine. And these are, I always screw this up, AISC or AICS, I forget what they're called, but either way, the AI, AI style single stack 308 mags, these are from Magpul. This stock ships with one of these. It also has sling attachment points on the rear here and you can adjust the length of pull. It also has a hardy butt pad, which really absorbs recoil. Now this stock is heavier than the regular stock that comes with the American. So just keep in mind, you are going to add weight to your rifle when you run the stock. And if you actually, as you're installing this, look down through the stock, there is a hunk of aluminum. This whole thing is like an aluminum chassis in here that this action actually bolts into. It is solid. And I don't know if you guys can see that. That is a true free floating barrel. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There is nothing touching that barrel. So again, just to recap, I love that it's got a cheek riser. I love that it has a detachable magazine. And when you buy the American Hunter stock, it comes with the magwell and the magazine. Whereas some for like the Remington 700, for example, or the Savage, some of those you actually have to add the magwell and magazine on after the fact and I think they're like 130 bucks or something. This stock ran me about $300. As you see it here with the magwell, the stock itself, and it comes with a couple extra length of pull adjustments which I didn't even mess with. Right out of the box to me, this feels perfect and I'm very pleased with how this feels. It just makes this whole gun, the whole gun feels much more robust in this configuration. Just everything from throwing it around to walking in the woods, um, you know, if you happen to knock it over or something, it just it feels like this is a much more robust rifle. It actually totally changes the feel of the rifle altogether. I'm very, very happy with this stock. Now, I'm not going to go into the assembly of the stock because it's just so easy. It's literally going to take you five minutes. So when you get this stock, open up the instructions, give it a read, and you're gonna see it's a couple screws. It's gonna take a couple minutes. It has everything in the box that you need. Don't be overwhelmed by that. You're not doing crazy shims or anything weird inside the action. You don't have to shave material away. It will fit. It works perfectly. And I could not be happier with how this stock went together, the fit, finish, function, and how it makes this rifle feel. I also touched on the fact that there is extra weight. That does help a little bit with the recoil. This gun shoots very soft now. And part of that's because I mostly shoot suppressed. That's gonna help knock down the felt recoil a little bit. But that weight is also gonna help. I mean, if you've shot a really light rifle, they can be snappy when you start getting into larger center fire calibers. But that's enough for the stock. I wanna move on to the scope and go over what I went with on this rifle. Before I go into the scope, and I know I just said I was gonna do that, 
I wanted to cover the question that I got asked probably five times this week, and that is, is that Magpul stock worth the money? You're going to be dropping about $300 on a stock for a rifle that cost you $400. And for some people, they were questioning whether or not that even makes sense. And I'm going to tell you that if you're looking to make the rifle feel more refined, have a better engagement with your cheek, getting your eye level up to the proper height for a scope, if that stuff matters to you, the adjustable length of pull, having the M-lock sections, and just in general having a better bedding setup in the stock, I would say, yeah, it's worth it. If you can afford to put that $300 into the rifle, to me, I don't know how you could regret that after the fact, just because of how much nicer it makes the rifle feel. Now that's totally based on my opinion. You may think totally different. Some of you are calling me crazy for putting that kind of money into a Ruger American. Whatever the case may be, that's kind of on you to decide. And I paid full price for this stock. Nobody sent me anything free. So all I'm doing is giving you my opinion. Moving on to the glass. This is one of my favorite pieces of this rifle. And this is honestly my favorite scope to date. This is the Vortex Viper HST 4-16 MRAD scope. This thing is freaking awesome. I mean, just look at that thing. It's a 44 millimeter objective up here, 30 millimeter tube, and I matched it with their precision set of rings. And I love this scope so much, it's going to get its own video. So I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about it here, but what you'll notice is I have the sun shield on, which really helps me out in the sunlight. I think it's awesome. You can just simply take this off. I got made fun of by a couple people because I had it on, whatever. I do me, you do you, that kind of thing. I don't really worry about what people say, if you haven't picked up on that yet. I don't really care about the haters. But anyway, with the 30 millimeter tube, the precision rings, it was super easy to install this. The Ruger American comes factory with a Picatinny section bolted on the top. I simply installed the base of the rings where I wanted them and then I torqued down the top section to, I believe it was 18 inch pounds, but check the manual, don't quote me on that. But one of my favorite things about the PST Gen 1s and the HST Gen 1s was the exposed turrets. And some people really hate that, and I'm gonna move in a little bit so you can see. Some people really hate that about these scopes. To me, that is brilliant, I love it. I can see exactly where my adjustments are. These are 0.1 milliradian clicks, which is gonna be about 0.36 inches at 100 yards. Check out the manual, it goes over all kinds of cool stuff with that. The, the scope's reticle is also fantastic. If I can find a, a picture of the reticle, I'm gonna put it up here in the video, but it has a ton of different drops in 0.5 milliradian increments, which is gonna give you a lot of different holdovers without actually having to turn the knobs. And then it also has the parallax adjustment on the side it has from 50 yards up to infinity, but it also has a stop at 500. So there's a lot of versatility with this scope. I think that you know for a $700 scope, you're getting really good quality, but bear that in mind. It's a, I actually think that they're discontinued, but when I bought this scope, the retail price was around $720. And then the ring set was around 200. Now you can find these rings sometimes on their website for 130 bucks, but that's a chunk of change to put on a Ruger American. But again, to fit in with my idea of the perfect all around 308, rather than spending all my money up front on the action and the barrel, I invested more money into the stock and the glass. And I'm gonna get into the accuracy, and I'm telling you that I'm very pleased that I went this route over spending more money on a 700 or a Savage Model 10. And I think it's worth considering, again, just my opinion, but when it comes to Vortex Optics, this HST, although I believe it's discontinued, is a fantastic scope. So if you're at a gun show and you can get your hands on one, I recommend it. I just can't say enough good things about this scope. I'm moving up the rifle. You can see I have a bipod here. I've got a little M-lock attachment on the bottom, because there are M-lock sections down the bottom of this stock. And then I've just simply attached the bipod to that so I can flip it out. 
And it's just a cheap little Blackhawk bipod. It's kind of like a Harris knockoff. I would say it's probably not the same craftsmanship level, but I've been using it now for months. It works out fantastic. This is a nine to 13 inch bipod. So it gives you some versatility when you're laying prone or you're sitting on the shooting bench and maybe you're shooting uphill or if you're in a valley and you're looking down into the valley while you're hunting, it does give you a little bit of versatility while you're sitting. It's definitely not as long as you would need if you're sitting flat and trying to shoot out, but it does give me versatility without adding too much bulk. Going up toward the end of the barrel, what you guys can see there is actually a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider. And I'm running this not because I really care about mitigating flash while I'm shooting this 308, but so that I can actually screw my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor directly onto it without having to do a direct thread. I really hate direct thread. It's just such a pain in the butt if I bring multiple guns to the range. Some have QD mounts, some have direct thread. It just sucks. I, I try whenever possible to use the ASR mount, even though they are pricey. That really stings when you start spending 80, 90 bucks a pop on these flash hiders and muzzle brakes. But I enjoy the luxury of getting to my hunting spot and being able to quickly throw a suppressor on. You can just leave the thread protector on that comes factory with the American Predator. There's nobody saying you can't just do that as well. You don't need to run a flash hider or a brake. Please don't run a brake. Brakes are obnoxious, especially if you like your hearing. But you don't have to run a muzzle device. It just gives you the option from the, the factory with a 5 8 by 24 thread pitch to run whatever 308 accessory you would like. On this rifle, I left the trigger just completely stock. I didn't mess with it. I didn't even turn the adjuster screws. Now this does have adjustment, and it is kind of like an accu trigger. I don't know if you can see that little blade. That kind of acts as a secondary safety. You can't just pull the trigger. You have to depress that blade, and then it'll allow it to actually break. I'm gonna try to show you guys how this looks on the trigger. There's very little creep and it just breaks. So I, I didn't actually put this on any kind of a scale to measure, but I'm gonna say it's probably breaking around four pounds, maybe four and a half pounds, which is definitely not the lightest trigger out there, but there are adjuster screws that you can get to through the receiver and you can tune this trigger to your needs. You can lighten it up a little bit and I believe Again, don't quote me, but I believe you can get it down to three and a half pounds. As far as the bolt goes, it's a three lug locking bolt. Nothing super fancy there, no crazy finish, but it does give a positive engagement. It's very easy to get in and out, even with the stock. I will say to get it out, you have to kind of turn it so that the handle is 180 degrees opposite of the action, rotate it around and close it. Again, you just, it, because of the, how the cheek riser is, you can see how close the fit is. Let me just pop this out. All right, so because of how close that cheek riser is, you have to turn it again 180 degrees and you'll actually be able to get it out. First time I tried to take this out to clean it, I thought I couldn't get it out with the stock. But again, you just have to rotate it 180 degrees. So right now it's facing me. Spin it around, lock it into place. Ready to rock and roll. There's a couple other points that I just wanted to touch on. And I'm sorry that this video is all over the place and there's so many videos I could actually make from the topics discussed in this video. So if you wanna see something in depth, more information, please just leave a comment below or email me keystonecarrypa at gmail.com. Send me some comments, let me know what you think, and we will get that in video. But bringing this video full circle and kind of tying it in here at the end, there's some things that I really, really love about this rifle. And if you can, I mean, you can probably tell from my post on Instagram, you can definitely tell from this video. I really love this rifle. I really think that it is doing everything that I want from it. There are some things that I don't like about it, and one of those is that it uses the AI style mags. It's a single stack magazine, so the biggest that you can get is a 10 round mag. For hunting, I'm not saying I need a 25 round magazine, but for sport shooting, there's times that it is nice. I'm not saying that I'm trying to get a 25 round mag for hunting white-tailed deer, but there's times when I'm at the range 
that it is really nice to have a larger magazine so I can just keep shooting, have more ammo on tap, or if I'm taking a tactical course or something like that. There's definitely times where I, I'm going to wish that this had the SR25 style magazine capability, but it does not. It has the five and 10 round magazines, so that's what I have to stick with. Not the end of the world, but it's definitely one spot that I'm not 100% happy with. The other point that to me I said doesn't matter that much, but it is something to consider that you may not like, is it is going to add some extra weight when you add the mag full stock. You throw a suppressor on top of that and you're adding even more weight. For some people that's gonna be a no-go. They're not even willing to consider it because of that. But for me, again, it wasn't enough of a problem to actually cause a problem. And so I just dealt with it, I hung with it, I thought it was fine and all of the benefits coming from this stock can outweigh the additional weight. Guys, that's it for this video. That's all I'm going to touch on. I know it went pretty long. I apologize for that, but there was so much going into this build that I wanted to talk about. And I said a couple minutes ago that if you want more information, please drop me an email. Again, the email is down here, Keystone Carry, PA, standing for Pennsylvania, that's what the PA means, at gmail.com. Drop me some comments below. Let me know what you want to see. And if you want to see anything specifically about this rifle, let me know. The best way to do that is just drop a comment, ask some questions. I will get right on top of your comments and I will respond to them and give you as much information as I can. But definitely give me some feedback and let me know where you would like to see more information on this build. And guys, that's it. So I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel give a comment below and let me know what you think and what you would like to see more of I really appreciate you guys sticking around thank you for the subscribes that you guys have given to me so guys until next video this is Jared Keystone Carry stay well stay safe and I will see you guys next time